All right, guys, it's time to check out the Breitling Premier Chronograph 42 millimeter. This is my least watch. This is what, the second watch that I picked up through the Breitling Select program. And I've honestly, I enjoyed it much earlier on when I received it. I was wearing it much more often. Uh, I don't really wear it now. It's kind of in the heat of the summer and everything. And I just don't really care to wear leather straps in the heat of the summer. But other than that, it's crazy comfortable. It works great. And I think I like it a little bit more than the Navitimer. And I might catch some heat on that one. But I think it's a more usable design, much more wearable design. So let's get into the specs of this guy here. So they call it a 42 mil. I measure at the outside case at like 42 and a half millimeter. The case is kind of scalloped out. So if you measure in there, it's only like 41 and a half, but to the outer portions here, it's like 42 and a half. But nevertheless, not too bad. 49.8 lug to lug, non-drilled lugs, nice brushed finish with polished on the upper side. 14 millimeter thick, but that's including this boxed and single slight dome to the sapphire crystal with AR coating on the top and bottom. Breitling does an amazing job with their AR coating on these, on all their watches. 22 millimeter lug width here, the calf leather uh, strap tapers down to 20, and then you have this very nice buckle system, probably one of my favorites out there for the leather straps, for sure. It's super easy to use, it's comfortable, and it looks great. 8 millimeter non-screw down crown, 100 meter water resist, tons of traction on that crown, look how deep those scallops are on there. Weighs in at 115 gram in its current configuration. Let's go ahead and start the chronograph. It is using the Breitling Caliber 13, otherwise known as the ETA 7750 or Valjoux 7750, whatever you want to call it. It is of course mod modified by Breitling to meet their standards. So it is uh, regulated, has, it should have a custom rotor, and then whatever other magic they want to perform on it, they do all that in-house. So the sub-dials here, if we zoom in, you're going to see a running seconds over there at the 9. That's always running. And then at the top, you're going to have your minute counter. So as the chronograph hand comes around to the 60 on the tachometer, you're going to see one minute register on that top register on the bottom one is going to be your hours. It's a 12 hour. So you can have this chronograph running for a very long time. So here we go. We're going to snap over one minute. So that is done. You have the applied B logo just above the Breitling 1894, 1884. Yeah, 1884 chronometer premiere. So that kind of fills that void over there at the three o'clock. And then they stuffed the color match date wheel down at the three o'clock interrupting the hour counter. Nice red tipped chronograph hand, fully polished handset. There is loom and the loom will be on, there's like little loom plots I think all the way around on this guy and then of course on the hour and minute hand. So we'll try to do a loom shot at the end. But check out the case finishing on this. Beautiful, excellent job. There's no errors on this. The pushers are nice and rectangular and then chamfered off. I mean, look at the transitions from the polish to the brushing. Breitling does an amazing job with their finishing. I don't think anybody can argue against that. You almost have like pinstriped relief cutouts fluted onto the side of the case that is also like kind of layered in there. Just a really cool design aspect. I, that's one of the draws to this watch. They could have easily just made this just a regular case side. And I think most people would have dismissed this watch. I think those touches of detail are what really help draw people into this watch. You have a nice polished case back, smudged up by me, and it is a screw down case back, or screwed in case back, I should say. The leather strap is also curved with curved spring bars holding it in. So that also kind of fills a little bit of that void and makes it look nice and clean. There are, I think, 
a couple of colorways on this one, but the blue, Breitling blue is so well done with that kind of silvery white tachometer inside ring to set it off. Helps the watch appear a little bit smaller too. So if I pop this on wrist, you can get a look at it on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. Wears, looks, and feels great on wrist, guys. I think if I'm going to end up owning a chronograph, I, I don't know, I just, I feel like it needs to be a Breitling. I'm not sure which one yet. The Navitimer really looked great to me. If you go back to my video, I really liked that watch. I like this one a little bit more than the Navitimer. And I'm not sure what watch I'm gonna order next because I only get three. So I'm thinking the Avenger, but I don't know if I want to get the Avenger chronograph. I might just get the regular Avenger or the GMT. I'm not sure yet. And I might just uh, resolve to a Breitling chronograph in the future, potentially. I like the Top Time series from Breitling, but this one's just a little more robust feeling, I think, and a little more timeless, I think. This is super comfortable on rest. I wish we've been having a pretty hot summer. I think all across the states, most people have had pretty decent temps. And I'm just, I don't know. I just don't want to get the, it's not even my watch, I know. But I just, I don't want to funkify the strap. You know what I mean? So, and I will do another update video on the Breitling Select program. Let you know where I'm at, what kind of uh, benefits there are, what the actual costs are, all of that good stuff. So let's go ahead, we don't have a display case back, so we're just gonna focus on the top here. We can go ahead and stop the chronograph and then we're gonna go ahead and reset it. It just instantly snaps back, resets all of those, and then your running second over here at nine o'clock just keeps going. So if you go ahead and pop, well, in the static position here for the crown, has a nice wind to it, and yes, the 7750 is gonna have some rotor wobble. And then first position, you can adjust the date and then last position, you, it does hack the movement and you can adjust the time and then you can see an instant snap over for the day change. This is actually like extremely robust, no movement in the crown at all. And this is a large crown, so you do have some leverage on it. There's no movement on it. And when you're rotating these hands around, there's like a resistance feel to it and that's those gaskets in there. So you know it's gonna have a nice solid 100 meter water depth rating on it and it just, feels so quality like when you're operating it and then you go ahead and push it in and get it running again let's kill the lights and check the loom on this bad boy and if you have any questions i can try to respond to them i will probably be sending this back oh you know what i was mistaken the only thing that is loomed is the hour and minute and it's a really thin application of loom totally visible but I don't know. I guess it's nice that they did that just to kind of balance out the hands, but if that's all we're going to have, then I guess nothing is fine too, but regardless. So I, at some point, I'm going to end up returning this watch because I'm not really wearing it. So I will get this one back and get another one selected. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next vid.